فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على من أرسله الله رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We are in the شرح and the explanation of the book دفع إيهام للضراب عن آيات الكتاب written by الشيخ العلامة محمد الأمين بن محمد المختار بن عبد القادر الجكني الشنقيطي رحمه الله We took, we took in our previous uh, sit our previous lesson we have we took the explanation of the muqaddimah the introduction we're now inshallah we ta'ala going to go into the first so called contradiction and we'll explain uh, that bi idhnillah al kareem the author starts by saying bismillah ar rahman ar rahim surah al baqarah so the sheikh as he said in his muqaddimah, that he's going to bring the, the con- supposed contradictions, he's going to bring it in sequence and in order. Uh, he's going to bring it, bring it in accordance to how the, the order and the sequence of the Quran, the way it is. So, Surah Al-Fatiha is not there. The reason why is because Surah Al-Fatiha is crystal clear. It is from the surah which is muhkam. Seven times, sorry five, sorry, five times a day. Five times a day. Minimum. The person has to recite Surah Al-Fatiha. So Surah Al-Fatiha, the Sheikh did not bring it. There is nothing for a person to say there is a idrab contradiction in Surah Al-Fatiha. So he starts with the second surah in the Quran. Tartib al-Mushaf. When you open the Mushaf, Surah Al-Fatiha is first and then comes what? Surah Al-Baqarah. The Shaykh says, Qawluhu ta'ala, the statement of Allah, Alif Lam Mim, Dalika al-Kitab. Alif Lam Mim, is from the huruf al It is from the disconnected um, letters of uh, the Quran. Meaning alif and lam and mim. Allah knows what he means by it. It is from the things that Allah has withheld the knowledge pertaining to it. We don't know what it means. In other words, it is from the mutashabih mutlaq. It is from the vague. It is from the verses which its meaning is not known. But we know the wisdom in why Allah used it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or some of the scholars, they stated the wisdom of why Allah uses these letters. Alif la mim, alif la mim ra, noon, sad. Qaf, Hamim, Ayn Sin Qaf, Kaf Ha Ya Ayn Sad, Alif Lam Mim Ra. These huruf, the wisdom in which Allah uses it, Al Imam Abu Al Fida, uh, Ibn Kathir Rahimahullah al Dimashqi, in his Tafsir al Quran al Azim, he states from his teacher. Abu al-Hajjaj al-Mizzi and Ibn Taymiyyah, he says, they said that there's a wisdom in why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses these uh, letters. It is to say, it is to tell and show the Arabs that this Quran is in a language which you guys know, such as Alif, letters you know, Lam, you know what Lam is, Mim, you know these letters, and even then you are, you are unable to come with the likes of it. It is to weaken them, is to make them feel like they are, they are incompetent. They are weak to come with the likes of the Qur'an. 
i'jazuhum is to weaken them. It is to make them feel that they are unable to come with the likes of the Quran. And if you know what it means, Lam, you know it, it's those letters that you know, and even then you can't come with the eloquency and the strength and the power that is in this Quran. But what it means, Alif Lam Mim, we don't know. But the wisdom behind it, the scholars they stated that was the hikmah in why Allah used it. Now, ذلك الكتاب is the discussion at hand. In other words, the reason why this, this issue is a debate, uh, so this issue, this ayah has been misunderstood and some, may, some thought there's a contradiction here is as the Sheikh is going to mention, which is أشار الله تعالى إلى القرآن في هذه الآية إشارة البعيد he says that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, he states in this verse, Isharat al Ba'id. Isharat al Ba'id. Isharat al Ba'id is the pointing and the indicating here is far and it's, it's very far. Dalika in the Arabic language, it shows it's an ishara. That shows that something is very far. You're pointing at something that is very far. So Allah wa Taala He says Alif Lam Mim Dalik Al Kitab That Quran. Instead of what? This. It is that Quran. So that. So you have to underline the word Dalik is the discussion here. Ashar Allah Taala Ila Al Quran Fi Hadi Al Ayat Ishara Al Baidi. Wa Qad Ashar Lahu. في آيات أخر إشارة القريب، but in other places of the Quran, Allah doesn't use the fa ishara. He doesn't use the, f, but he uses instead of that he uses this. Such as what? كقوله the statement of Allah إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوى مو. Here Allah uses هذا. Instead of what? Dalika. Hada. Instead of what? Dalika. Waka kawlihi and the statement of Allah. Because Dalika shows what? Isharat al ba'idi fa. Whereas Hada shows what? Isharat al qaribi is shows something close, which is this. Waka kawlihi and statement of Allah. Inna hada al qur'ana. يقص على بني إسرائيل وكقوله أن statement of Allah وهذا كتاب أنزلناه مبارك وكقوله نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن إلى غير ذلك من الآيات and other verses other than this so here the الضراب the apparent contradiction to some is how is it that sometimes Allah is referring to the Qur'an as something that is far by saying ذَلِكَ And then again we see at times saying هَذَا This How can we reconcile between the two? So there's this thing I need to, inshaAllah ta'ala, I have to mention here and I have to elaborate on which is the issue that ismul ishara ismu al ishara if you have studied the Arabic grammar, you will know that there's something called mu'rabat. Sorry, there's something called the ma'arif. There is something called ma'arif. Ma'arif are things that are known. Zayd is known. Alam, a name. It's something you know. That's one. One of the ma'arif, the things that when you say it, it's already known, is the ismu ishara. Because what you're pointing at is known now. Hada this. You can't say to me what? What are you talking about? It's ma'arif. Are you with me? It is what? It is a ma'arif. It is well known. Ibn Malik rahimahullah, he places the ismu ishara when it comes to the grading of the ma'arif and the levels. 
he puts the ism ishara on the third level. How strong they are, because they're not all the same. Is, this, is the name the same as the ishara? The name is more stronger in terms of knowing the person, right? Because I can point at somebody who can say, who still try to want to know who it is. Huh? Ibn Malik, he graded the ism ishara in the third type, in the qism al And that's why he says, he says, بِذَالِ مُفْرَدٍ مُذَكَّرٍ أَشِيرٍ بِذِي وَذِهْتِ تَا عَلَى الْأُنْثَقْ تَصِرٍ وَذَانِ تَانِ لِلْمُثَنَّ الْمُرْتَفِعِ وَفِي سِوَاهُ دَيْنِ تَيْنِ ذْكُرْ تُطِعِ وَبِئُولَا أَشِرٍ لِجَمْعٍ مُطْلَقًا وَالْمَدُّ أَوْلَى وَلَدَ الْبُعْدُ انْتِقًا وَلَا وَلَدَ الْبُعْدِ انْتِقًا بِالْكَافِ حَرْفَ الدُّونَ لَا مِنْ أَوْ مَعَهُ وَاللَّامُ إِنْ قَدَّمْتَهَا مُمْتَنِعَهُ So he says بِذَالِ مُفْرَدٍ مُذَكَّرٍ أَشِرٍ بِذِي وَذِهْتِ تَا عَلَى الْأُنْثَقْ تَصِرٍ Ibn Malik, we have to understand something here right now. Uh, before I go to that, this point you have to understand, which is that ismu ishara. And we all know what ismu ishara is right now, sah? Uh, ismu ishara is looked at when it comes to the thing that you're pointing at, which is known as the musharu ilayh. The thing that you're pointing at, it's called the musharu ilayh. The thing that you're pointing at. It affects the type of ishara that you have to use. Does that make sense? When we look at, when we observe and we analyze, and we look at what you're pointing at, it will affect the type of ism ishara that you're going to use. Does that make sense? So there are three types, and we're going to we're going we're going to take it into two types, inshallah ta'ala and categorize into two, which is looking at it from the angle of if it's ifrad, if it's singular, or if it is a masculine. In other words, you look at the adad, the, ta the amount it is, and you look at the gender, that's one. From that, we have and, that, and those of that which come out of it, I'm going to mention all of those types. The first we have to observe is Mushara. So let me, re, let me uh, uh, go over what I said. The Musharu Ilayhi, the thing that you're pointing at, you're pointing at this board right now, sah? The fact that you're pointing at that board now affects the type of Ism ishara that you're going to use. And there's two ways of looking at it. We look at it, is it only one or two? Or is it three and more? Which makes it, so is it singular? Is it dual? Is it plural? So that's the added. And is it a masculine or a feminine? That's one. The second one is, you look at it from the angle of is it, is it close or is it far? The thing that I'm pointing at. Is it something what? We're looking at it from the angle of it, of, of it being close or what? Being far. Are you with me? Hada. Get rid of the ha. Because the ha is not the ism ishara. The ha is lead tanbi, it's to point out. It is to get the person's attention. It's called tanbi, it's to get the person's attention. The word we're looking at is the. Ha, the. Forget the ha, the. Are you with me? Thalika, what is it? You drop the ha. So ha, the, drop the ha because, it, it, because it's tanbi. Are you with me? Walidalika ibn Malik, he didn't mention all of them when he said be the. بِذَالِ مُفْرَدٍ مُذَكَّرٍ أَشِيرٍ بِذِي وَذِي اهْتِتَاء عَلَى الْأُنْتَقْ تَصِرٍ He didn't mention all types. The Mufrad, write this down, it's very important that you memorize and you remember it. The singular, masculine, is five. Are you with me, brothers? Singular, masculine, is five. Good. The singular, Feminine, which is the second, is how much? 
it is 10. How much we have? Very good. The dual masculine is one. Are you with me? The dual feminine is one. The fifth one right now, sir. The fifth one is a plural masculine is one and a plural feminine is one how much do we have together all together we have 19 right some stick to 19 and others they stretch it to 24 because they bring ula and ula and it's types out of it but 19 is the view of some. Are you with me, brothers? Does that make sense? Because we have to go over it fast. The second way of looking at it was what? That was the first type. Looking at it from the angle of it being what? Either masculine or feminine or plural, dual or singular. Does that make sense? Now we're going to look at it from the angle of it being what? And this is the al musharu ilayhi. We're looking at it from the angle of qurbihi wa bu'dihi. Whether it's close or it's far. Now, Ibn Malik, that's why he says, وَلَدَ الْبُعْدِ انْتِقَى بِالْكَافِ حَرْفًا دُونَ لَا مِنْ أَوْمَعَهُ وَاللَّامُ إِنْ قَدَّمْتَهَا مُمْتَنِعَهُ So Ibn Malik, goes against the view of the Jumhur al-Nuhat. He goes against the majority of the grammarians. The majority of the grammarians are of the opinion that the, when you look at the Musharu ilay in terms of it being close or far, they believe it's of three categories. They believe it's of three categories. The Jumhur. Jumhur al-Nuhat, that's what they believe. They believe that it's Qurba. Something that's close. Are you with me, brothers? Wusta <coughs> and Buddha. They believe it is. Are you with me, brothers? It is the um, closest. Not very far, nor is it too close, which is the Wusta is in the middle. And very far away, Buddha. Ibn Malik doesn't believe that. Ibn Malik believes. It is either qurba or bu'da. It is either close or it is either far. Are you with me, brothers? How do you identify the harf, the, sorry, the ism, this is ism ishara, that is qurba? How would you say it? Ibn Malikin, this is what he says. Pay attention. He says, there's no lamb and there's no calf in it. It's like the. Ha the. Drop the half because it can be the. So Ibn Malik rahimahullah he believes what? That the the without a lamb and a calf in it is qurba. They will agree with him on this. They say, okay, we're also with you on this. And he believes, Ibn Malik, that the bu'da, the one that's far, the ism ishara, which is far is when you add a lamb or whether you add a calf. It doesn't matter. For him the qurba, so if dhalika, drop the ha, dhalika is what? It's got a lamb and a calf at the end. Dhalika. He believes lika shows that it's qurda, it's far. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So for him, that's how it is. It is either the, which is qurba, or the lika. For him, li, the lamb and the calf shows what? Buda, that it's far. The jumhur, they said no. 
if the calf is used and the lamb is dropped, for example, the calf. Is the lamb used? And the Arabs use that. They said this is wusta for us. Ibn Malik said, no, it doesn't matter. Whether the calf is used alone, or whether the lamb and the calf is used alone. It doesn't matter. Whether you say dhaka or dhalika, for him is qubu'da. Whether you say that, uh, sorry, and if you say that for him is qurba, it's close. Does that make sense? So Ibn Malik, rahimahullah, that is where he goes. وَلَدَ الْبُعْدِ انْتِقَاهِ بِالْكَافِ حَرْفًا أَوْ أَمَا دُونَ لَامٍ أَوْ مَعَهِ وَالْلَامُ إِنْ قَدَّمْتَهَا مُمْتَنِعَةِ فَهِمْ that's what it is. And there's also another way he categorizes it, Ibn Malik, rahimahullah. But for us, that's what Matt concerns us now, which is, the ism ishara, which is ba'id and qareeb. Have we now got an understanding of the ism asma ishara and how it works? Now that we've mentioned that, how is it that we can reconcile between the verses? How do we reconcile these between these verses? Inna hadha al-Qur'ana yahdi lillati hi aqab. We've just learned that the word hadha is what? Is ism ishara, which is al-qareeb, right? And thalika we learned is what? Ba'id, right? How do we know it's Ba'id? Because it's... And Lama Kaf is in there. As for the Jumhur, what do they believe? There's a Lam in there. They won't say Lam and Kaf. They will say Lam because the Kaf by itself for them is Wusta, it's not a Bu'da. Ala kulli hal, how do you reconcile between the two? Ibn Muhammad al-Amin al-Shaqqit is now going to tell us. He's going to he said, وَلِلْجَمْعِ بَيْنَ هَذِهِ الْآيَاتِ أَوْ جُهُنْ the way to reconcile between these verses is in many ways. Al-wajhul awwalu, the first way to do it, is ma harrarahu ba'du ulama'i al-balaghati min anna wajha al-isharati ilayhi bi isharati al-hadir al-qareebi anna hadha al-Qur'an qareebun hadirun fi al-asma'i wal-al-sinati wal-qulubi wa wajhu al-isharati ilayhi ba'i wa wajhu al-isharati ilayhi bi al-isharati al-ba'idi هو بعد مكانته ومنزلته من مشابهة كلام الخلق عما يزعمه الكفار من أنه سحر أو شعر أو كهانة أو أساطير الأولين. The first way to reconcile between them two is to reconcile between the two is he says he says is ما حرره بعض علماء البلاغة. He said it is how some of the scholars of rhetoric eloquency the way that they reconciled between. So he's taking the view of the, the ulama of balagha. Their answer, which is one of the ways to reconcile. How, what did they say? They said that the ishara to al, al hadir al qareeb the usage of the ishara which is close, is basically that the Quran is close to the hearts and it is closer on the tongue and it is also close in the hearing. And now the Quran hadirun. It is close and it's present on our tongues. It is close and present in our hearts. So it's very close to us. It's in our hearts. Something that's very close to you here. But when the usage of the word dhalika comes and it's far, it's trying to use it far from the accusation of the kuffar who said that the Qur'an is sihr or it's poetry or it is fortune telling or it is the stories of I'm a mist it is what? Asatiru al-awwaleen Asatiru al is what? It is made up stories Myths. So it's far from that. Are you with me? It is far from all of that. It's also far from what? مِمُشَابَهَةِ كَلَامِ الْخَلْقِ For it to resemble the speech of the creation is also far from it. So that's why he says. That's the first which. That's the first response. There's also another answer he says. الْوَجْهُ الثَّانِي The second way which is it is the choice that was taken by Ibn Jarir al-Tabari rahimahullah fi tafsirihi 
Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, the view that he took in his tafsir. Now what you need to understand is, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari did not bring it as an ayah that seems to contradict itself. When he chose this opinion, he wasn't bringing it as though there was a contradiction between verses. He just chose what the meaning of the verse means. Does that make sense? So Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, Imam al-Mufassirin, he's called. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari. He says, مِنْ أَنَّ ذَٰلِكَ إِشَارَةُ إِلَىٰ تَضَمَّنَهُ قَوْلُهُ He said that the ذَٰلِكَ in Alif Lam Mim, ذَٰلِكَ الْكِتَابُ It consists of what is in Alif Lam Mim. Are you with me? وَأَنَّهُ أَشَارَ إِلَيْهِ إِشَارَةَ الْبَعِيدِ And that it addressed it and spoke about it as though it's something very far. And that is because the speech has ended. لَأَنَّ الْكَلَامَ الْمُشَارُ إِلَيْهِ مُنْقَاضٍ The speech that is being pointed at has been said. The speech that the person is saying has come to an end. وَمَعَنَاهُ فِي الْحَقِيقَةِ But in reality it is close. لِقُرْبٍ قِضَائِهِ Because of its finishing was very recent. وَضَرَبَ لَهُ مَثَلًا Ibn Jarir Tabari gave an example of this, which is It is like a man talking to another man. And he says to him one time, Wallahi by Allah, Inna dhalika laka ma qulta. Inna dhalika, that this, that, that, sorry. Are you with me? Is as I said to you. As you said. Is as you have said. That that is as you have said. And then وَمَرَّةً يَقُولُ And then uh, and, and, and another time he says to him Wallahi by Allah إِنَّ هَذَا لَمَا قُلْتَ لَكَ مَا قُلْتَ That this is as you have said. So he goes فَإِشَارَةُ الْبَعِيدِ نَظَرًا إِلَىٰ أَنَّ الْكَلَامَ مَضَى وَانْقَضَى When he used the word ذَلِكَ in the first statement the man he was referring he was looking at the fact that the statement has come to an end and it's finished. So that's why he's saying. But when he used the qareeb, that it's close, nadaran is observing ila qurbin qilda'ihi. Its finishing was very recent. It actually ended very recent. So one time he's looking at the fact that the statement is finished. That's far. Something that's finished is far in its finishing. But then when you observe when did it finish, the usage of the qareeb is used. That's one view. And that view seems to be, seems to be, uh, very good. The second, the third way to reconcile is أن العرب ربما أشارت إلى القريب إشارة البعيد فتكون الآية على أسلوب من أساليب اللغة العربية. The Sheikh says that the Arabs they use them both exchangeably, huh? interchangeably. They sometimes use the qareeb in the place of the uh, ba'id and the ba'id in the place of the, <coughs> the qareeb. So they use both in each other's places. And he says, فَتَكُونُ الْآيَةُ عَلَىٰ أُسْلُوبٍ مِنْ أَسَالِيبِ اللُّغَةِ الْعَرَبِيَةِ And this is the usage or one of the methods of the Arabs' speech and how they talk. And now he has to back that up with a proof. Ibn uh, Al-Alama Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Shanqiti, he has to show us that the Arabs do this. ونظيره قول خفافة بن ندبة السلمي لما قتل مالك بن حرملة الفزاري. So he brings the example of خفافة بن ندبة السلمي لما قتل when he killed مالك بن حرملة الفزاري. So he's, the sheikh is now trying to say that the third way is that the Arabs they they interchangeably use the Ismu uh, Ishara, which is Qareeb, and that which is Ba'id, they use it interchangeably. And this is from Uslub min Asalibi Lugat al Arabiya. It is a method and it is one of the uh, ways of the Arabs. And an example for that is the lines of poetry from Khufafa ibn Nudbata as Sulami. Khufafa ibn Nudba, his name is. خفافة ابن عمير ابن الحارث الشريدي السلمي 
And his kunya is Aba Khurasha. And he's a Sahabiyun, he's a companion. Nudbah is his mother. Wa Nudbah to Umuhu. Nudbah is his mother. Wa ilayha yantasibu, he attributes himself, I mean, he's attributed to his mother. Lama Qatala, when he killed Malik ibn Harmalat al Fazari. When he killed Malik ibn Harmalat al Fazari. The Sheikh said Malik ibn Harmala. I try to look and see if that is the case. If his name is Malik ibn Harmala. And the Taba'a Daru, the Taba'a of Daru Alim al Fawaid that we have, this is how it's written. And they truly are Daru Alim al Fawaid, the way they work on the books and the way they put effort in making sure that the Nusakh that they rely on and making sure that it's correct is very strong, without a doubt. The tahqiqat of books is profound and it's excellent. I don't believe it's a mistake that has come from the nasikh, the one who was writing from the manuscript, that he has done this mistake. So it seems like this is a mistake on the side of the noble shaykh, uh, al-allama, Muhammad al-Amin al-Sharqiyat, rahimahullah, that he must have said this or write, written this in his book, which is this book we're reading, that he said Malik ibn Harmat al-Harmalat al-Fazari. But his name is not Malik ibn Harmala. His name is Malik ibn Himar. Uh, uh, Malik ibn Himar al Fazariu. His real name is, as I said, huwa Malik ibn Himar al Shamkhiyu al Fazariu. So that is from the Sheikh's side. It's a mistake and it's a shortcoming. You can verify that by looking at the following books, which is a Dibaj, Li Ma'mar ibn al Muthanna, Al Aghani lil Asfahani. You can look at Al Isti'ab uh, by Ibn Abdul Bar, and other books you could find it, inshallah. So here's the Sheikh trying to prove that the Arabs they use it interchangeably. When he said, فَإِنْتَكُ خَيْلِ قَدْ أُصِيبَ الصَّمِيمُهَا فَعَمْدًا عَلَىٰ عَيْنِي تَيَمَّمْتُ مَالِكًا أَقُولُ لَهُ وَالرُّمْحُ يَأْطَرُ مَتْنَهُ يَأْطَرُ يَأْطِرُ سوري يَأْطِرُ مَتْنَهُ تَأَمَّلْ خُفَافًا إِنَّنِي أَنَا ذَلِكَا خفافة ابن لودبة السلمي He's killing مالك ابن ابن حمار الفزاري He's killing him and when you're killing a person, you're stabbing him because there's not a gun. You're very close to the person. And he reads these lines of poetry and he says to him, فَإِن تَكُوا خَيْلِي قَدْ أُصِيبَ الصَّمِيمُهَا فَعَمْدًا عَلَىٰ عَيْنِي تَيَمَّمْتُ مَالِكًا أَقُولُ لَهُ وَالرُّمْحُ يَأْطِرُ مَتْنَهُ يَأْطِرُ مَعْلَهُ The arrow that I put in is, is dug into his body. It's gone into his body. And I'm saying to him, تَأَمَّلْ أَبْزَرْ وَرَيْ خُفَافًا إِنَّنِي أَنَا ذَلِكَ Observe. Observe, look, look at me and observe. Ha, innani ana dalika. Malik, this is me. So he referred to himself who's right under him, dalika. When he's me, trying to say, hada, which is qareeb. So he's using isharat al ba'idi. In the place of what? In the place of isharat al qareebi. The man is close, he's right in front of him. You see, the word samimuha. فَإِنْ تَكُوا خَيْلِ قَدْ أُصِيبَ الصَّمِيمُهَا خَيْلِ he doesn't mean he's a horse. He means his fellow friends. قَدْ أُصِيبَ الصَّمِيمُهَا Samim means what? Samim is Sharifuha, the most honorable of them. فَعَمْدًا عَلَىٰ عَيْنِ تَيَمَّمْتُ مَالِكًا Deliberately, I directed myself تَيَمَّمْتُ Ibn Abdul Bar, if I'm not wrong, in the Sharah of Mata Imam Malik, the word tayammum, he uses this line of poetry to prove that the word tayammamtu ay qasattu. The word tayammum means to intend. Tayammamtu ay qasattu. I intended Malik and I intended Malik in his saints. Aqulu lahu, I was saying to Malik, warrumhu and my arrow, and my spear, ya'tiru matnahu. It is hanging from him. Ta'ammal observe khufafan. Innani ana dhalika ay innani ana hadha. That's what he's trying to say. وَهَذَا الْقَوْلُ This speech, I mean this last one which is that using the word اسم إشارة in the place of the اسم 
اسمه إشارة القريب using in the place of the بعيد and using them interchangeably هذا القول that view is taken by who الإمام البخاري that's the view إمام البخاري took which is the third which and also معمر بن المثنى and أبو عبيدة and also أبي عبيدة and this is what ابن كثير رحمه الله attributes to them he attributed this وعلى كل حال الشيخ محمد الأمين الشقيطي said whatever the situation may be فعامة المفسرين the majority of the مفسرين are of the opinion أن ذلك الكتاب that ذلك الكتاب means هذا الكتاب the majority of the scholars are of the opinion that ذلك الكتاب means هذا الكتاب in other words they have taken each other's place but they all differed upon how can they reconcile between it and he's mentioned that these three ways are from the ways to reconcile between it we'll stop there inshallah ta'ala for today's uh, class and today's um, uh, series anything that i said that was wrong fa innahu minni wa min ash-shaytani wallahu wa rasuluhu bari'an minhu subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh